when Marcel started talking to me a couple uh, couple weeks ago about uh, coming here to uh, join you folks today, you know, we 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 both love ice wine so much. And um, what you might not know is uh, it's a really interesting uh, ingredient in in cocktails. And so, I, you know, most of the folks on this uh, on this call here have probably heard of an ice wine martini. Uh, and I know that uh, you guys serve it at uh, at Pond View Winery or a variation of it uh, at uh, Pond View currently. So we're going to show you a, a, a riff on the ice wine martini uh, today and, and take you through a couple of other uh, ice wine centric uh, cocktails using both the uh, Vidal and Cabernet Franc uh, ice wine from uh, from Pond View. And, you know, the goal today is not only to show you a couple of like simple ways that you can, uh, you know, add some tweaks to your ice wine and uh, enjoy some relatively easy to uh, to execute drinks at home. But hopefully along the way, uh, we'll be able to teach you a couple of little tips and tricks for when you're making uh, cocktails at home. I'm currently in my home bar here and uh, I uh, believe me after uh, everything that uh, that we got to you know uh, experience communally here uh, over uh, 2020 I uh, I'm very grateful to have had such a well stocked bar uh, here in my uh, my basement and if you think it's stocked well now you should have seen it at the beginning of last year um, so you know without Further ado, uh, I'm going to start, uh, as promised, with a riff on our ice wine martini. So, if you've had one before, you've likely tasted a mixture of a premium vodka with with ice wine and, and not much else. And we're not going to stray too far from that uh, today. Um, but uh, to start, we're going to uh, reach for uh, the Pond View uh, Vidal ice wine. And you know, thing to keep in mind when you're when you're mixing with ice wine. Obviously, we're working with a premium product, so we want to match the spirit that we're pairing with ice wine to be equally as premium. You know, at the end of the day, you use your favorite, your your preferred spirit. I've got a lot of different uh, great vodkas behind me to choose from. I'm going to be mixing with uh, Kettle One vodka today. Obviously, there's a lot of great local options that you can choose from uh, as well, but. Um, Anyways, we're gonna get started here. And so for this drink, I, uh, I'm gonna stir this cocktail rather than shake it. Uh, and so I'm gonna, I've got this fancy little mixing glass thing that I'm gonna uh, uh, put all of my ingredients into, pack it full of ice, and then we'll go from there. So to start, I'm gonna use an ounce of our uh, Pond View Vidal ice wine. The next couple of cocktails I'm going to take you through use the uh, Cab Franc, but in this particular drink, the uh, the Vidal really does well. And then I'm going to add an ounce and a half of premium vodka and that salt is going to go right in there. And the little twist that I'm using today is uh, ahead of uh, ahead of our chat, I uh, brewed a little bit of jasmine green tea, and I'm going to add that into into my drink. So I'm going to do an ounce of this. It's chilled, so I'm not using a uh, hot uh, hot tea with our uh, other ingredients here. And then I'm just going to add. And apologies if you catch a little bit of uh, noise in my AirPods here, but I'm add a little bit of ice to my mixing glass. Full of you because we want to take a little bit of time and I'm going to recommend stirring for a good 15 to 20 seconds with this drink just to make sure that everything that's in the glass and I'm going to hold it up here since you can't quite see it on the, on the camera but you want to make sure that everything in the glass is nice and thoroughly chilled and also diluted right so we're adding a full ounce and a half of vodka to this drink so as you stir the volume of the liquid will start to increase a little bit of water is fine in, in this case because we want to take some of the harsh edges off of something like that, that vodka, okay? We're going to stir, 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 stir. I'm sure you guys know already, but uh, you know the reason why we would stir uh, a drink like this here is because we want to maintain a lot of the uh, the great flavors of it. We don't want to, if we're going to shake this drink, we're going to add a lot more water into it. It's going to dilute it a lot more, and it's going to take away from the great flavors of the vodka and the Vidal ice wine. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, I have left my my glass in uh, in my fridge here to uh, to chill ahead of time. Uh, because we're going to serve this drink without ice, 
It's a great idea to uh, pre-chill your uh, your glassware ahead of time. So if you don't have it in a fridge or a freezer, just while you're making the drink, throw a couple of cubes in the glass, maybe a little bit of uh, bubbly water just to help get the uh, get the liquid moving around a little, little bit. And then I'm just gonna strain all of that ice out and directly into the glass here. This is a small little glass, so this isn't like a massive V-shaped martini glass. We, you know, uh, those, uh, standard glasses that you see are are great. However, we've only got a few ounces of uh, of liquid that are going into this drink, and we we're, we're not overly diluting it. So we don't uh, want to you know un unless we're making you know two or three drinks at a time to fill out that uh, twenty ounce martini glass. We want appropriate size glassware. So I just have a nice simple little uh, cocktail glass here. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take grapefruit. So uh, whether you use grapefruit or lemon would work equally as well here. I've got a uh, simple vegetable peeler that I'm going to use to uh, get some of the uh, the, uh, the skin or the uh, the peel from the uh, the, the grapefruit. I'm going to peel this right over the surface of the drink and as I'm doing it, and it's tough to see on camera, but as you're peeling the uh, the citrus, you're starting to get some of those great oils coming out of the uh, out of the skin of the uh, of the uh, the citrus, which is awesome. Going on the surface of the drink, which means that when you go to take a sip, before you even take a sip, you're going to start to smell a lot of that great citrus flavor. I'm just using my knife here just to clean up the peel a little bit, just so it's nice and. Uh, parallel. It's not so uh, uh, ugly here. I'm going to just give it a quick little spritz over the surface of the glass. And last little thing, just, just going to wipe the sides of the glass and I can drop that, that zest right in. So this is our version of our Martini. Uh, so again, premium vodka with the uh, Pond View Vidal ice wine, a little bit of chilled jasmine green tea and and then I get it just, it's pretty darn good. <laughs> In these first couple of recipes that we are gonna show you today, basically what we're using ice wine for is we're using it in place of vermouth in, in a cocktail. So we use the Vidal ice wine in place of of, um, of uh, the dry vermouth that you might have in a regular uh, vodka or gin martini. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, the next cocktail we're gonna do is a Manhattan, a nice wine Manhattan, which traditionally would have sweet vermouth in it. And instead we're gonna use the Pond View Cabernet Franc ice wine. So vermouth, just like a, a, a wine or, uh, or ice wine, um, you know, if you if you go into a bar, you know, when, when that's actually a thing again, and you see the, uh, you know, the big bottle, uh, two liter bottle of vermouth uh, sitting on the uh, the back bar cooking under uh, under the uh, pot lights that are shining down on it, uh, you know, I bet you that bottle's not going to taste very fresh. So similarly, when you uh, when you're enjoying cocktails at home or when you're using vermouth at home, you know vermouth. Uh, if, if you're not familiar, you know, you take a base wine, you fortify it, and then you infuse it with a bunch of different herbs and botanicals. So, so primarily wormwood, but also things like gentian and angelica and other delicious things to give it a little bit more of a, a bitter backbone uh, and just to, you know give it a little bit more herbaceousness and deliciousness. In that drink. So when you have vermouth at home, similar to wine, it would be a good idea to keep that in the uh, in the fridge. You're going to get a little bit longer uh, in terms of shelf life on it instead of uh, versus versus wine, just because the alcohol content is a lot higher. But uh, again, just general generally uh, a good practice to keep that in uh, in the fridge as well. So uh, as promised, we are going to move on to our. Yeah, so for uh, both uh, red and uh, and white vermouth, I would uh, recommend it. Yeah, for sure. So next up on our uh, on our cocktail list here for today, we are going to do a version of a ice wine Manhattan. Again, uh, traditional Manhattan has whiskey uh, with sweet vermouth and bitters, uh, and usually a, a citrus twist. We're going to do all of those uh, those same things again. We're trying to keep it relatively relatively simple for you guys. These should be pretty easy for you to make at home. 
Uh, and instead of our sweet vermouth, we're gonna start today with the uh, the Pond View Cabernet Franc ice wine. The Vidal tastes tastes lovely in this uh, in this uh, cocktail as well. I prefer the uh, the Cab Franc though. So I am just going to add an ounce of that into my mixing glass. And then we're gonna take, again, uh, similar to the uh, the note on the uh, on the last cocktail, we want to pair premium ice wine with a premium whiskey. I'm using uh, Lot 40. It's a lovely Canadian uh, whiskey, 100% rye. Uh, it's a little bit higher in proof, which I like for for this application uh, as well. So we want to be able to cut through a little bit of the uh, of the sweetness of the the ice wine. So this is 43%. Uh, uh, and we're going to use uh, two ounces of this paired with our one ounce of the uh, the Cap Franc ice wine. And next, we're going to add a couple of dashes of bitters. So you've probably seen well, it's pretty bright here, so it's kind of difficult to see. But uh, you've probably seen uh, a bottle like this in your in your grocery store. Uh, you might have it on on a home bar. I don't quite know what to do with it. Um, so bitters are to cocktails as salt and pepper are to drinks. That's the easiest way to to think about it. So you have in this bottle, you have a, a base spirit and a bunch of different herbs and botanicals and usually a little bit of, uh, of sugar as well. Angostura aromatic is kind of like the most classic, the most common one that you're going to see, but there's a million different delicious bitters brands out there uh, now. I'm going to show you a local one in just a second actually as well. Um, but this one is going to help bring out some of those um, you know, delicious like baking spice type flavors in, in the, uh, the whiskey and just amp that up a little bit. So I'm going to put four dashes in our Manhattan. And again, I'm just going to fill this uh, completely with ice. Just like we did last time, I want to give this a nice solid stir for about 15 to 20 seconds or so. Give that, uh, that drink the opportunity for all of those flavors to melt together, for the drink to get nice and cold for us. And just add that little bit of dilution just to uh, round everything up. that was enough time here. So uh, next up, so this one I'm going to serve actually on uh, on ice. You know, Manhattans can be enjoyed either way. I prefer mine uh, with a little bit of ice. So I can use a nice rocks glass. And instead of the same cubes that I use for uh, mixing the drink, I've got this these great, you know, two by two ice cube molds. So these nice big block of ice that I'm going to drop into the glass and I'm going to pour my ice wine Manhattan over that one big cube. Now, real quick in the in the chat, I'm wondering if anyone can tell me why I would use a big cube in here instead of the uh, the little ice cubes that uh, that we use for actually mixing the uh, the drink. Melt slower, less dilution. Absolutely. Wow. I think you got a cut couple of uh, cocktail fans here in the uh, <laughs> in the wine club. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. So if we filled this glass up with a bunch of little small ice cubes, again, those because we have, you know, whiskey and uh, and, and our ice wine in here, it's going to it's going to uh, start to melt as soon as we introduce the liquid to the glass with a bigger cube, you have more surface area, which means that it's going to stay colder for longer and it's going to melt a lot slower. So we're going to put uh, our cocktail in there and traditionally um, uh, I'm going to finish this with a zest of orange again over the surface of the glass so I'm getting all of those great orange oils directly into the drink and once I've done that I'm just gonna I did I gave a quick little spritz over the surface of the drink and I'm just gonna rub that orange peel on the side of the glass so that when I take a sip I get that extra little dash of orange and last but not least, a Manhattan is typically enjoyed with a cocktail cherry, not those uh, neon red uh, things that uh, that we all remember from the uh, the 90s. But instead, I've got uh, from uh, Kvass Fine Beverage Company, a local uh, you know uh, company here, uh, their uh, whiskey and black pepper cherries, uh, which I'm just going to drop right in the drink. So I've got three garnishes. So I've got two cherries and one orange. Good rule of thumb when you're uh, 
when you're making your drinks at home garnish in uh, in odd numbers. It's just uh, it's just good luck. Okay. So there is our ice wine Manhattan. The next drink I'm going to do for us, we're going to switch it up, get away from the, uh, the stirred cocktails here for a second, and we're going to do a simple uh, twist on a cosmopolitan. Again, using uh, ice wine in this drink instead of uh, the traditional sweetener, which would be um, pardon me, which would be our curacao or our triple sec, Cointreau, Grand Marnier, uh, whichever sort of orange look liqueur is your choice. So we're going to omit that in uh, in this uh, cocktail today. We're going to use uh, ice wine in its place with a little bit of orange bitters just to uh, help get that uh, that citrus flavor. So again, uh, let's get started. So. Once again, I'm going to use a, a premium vodka. I'm going back to Kettle One because I've already got it here on the bar. Just an ounce of that in, right into my cocktail shaker. Uh, I'm going to use the, uh, the Cab Franc ice wine once again uh, in this cocktail. I, I think, you know, the uh, the kind of red fruit notes a bit uh, pair well with the uh, with the cranberry juice that I'm going to add into the uh, the drink here. So I'm going to do an ounce of the Pond View Cab Franc ice wine here. Then I'm going to add an ounce and a half of cranberry juice. So if uh, if anyone on the call is or on the on the chat here is a as a fan or was a fan of Sex and the City, you know this drink obviously was made uh, popular by by that show uh, back in the nineties. 2000s. Um, one thing they got wrong about the drink though, um, because it looks way better on TV, is typically you'll see this drink and it's bright red, which means that it's basically a big old glass of cranberry juice. Uh, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna uh, be careful about the amount of cranberry that we're uh, that we're adding to the uh, the drink today because we want it to be nice and balanced and we want some of the flavors of, uh, of the ingredients here to shine through uh, without it getting too watered down by the juice. We, we want to taste the alcohol here for sure. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to add, uh, again, just to cut through the uh, sweetness of the cranberry juice and also the ice wine, is just a squeeze of uh, fresh lime. Some limes here. Depending on the size and freshness of your lime, good rule of thumb is one lime should give you around one ounce of, uh, of uh, lime juice. So I'm going to squeeze that right into our cocktail shaker. You could, of course, measure it, uh, but we're going to skip that step here uh, today. And because we're omitting our orange liqueur, I'm going to add into our cocktail shaker some orange bitters. So again, another great local product, Stir Crazy Orange Bitters, brand new uh, product made by a, a local bartender here. Uh, we're going to add a couple of dashes of the orange bitters into our cocktail shaker and then try and do this with using my hands fill that shaker completely up with us so once we've got everything in there we're going to cap our shaker and again i apologize if this gets a little bit loud my air pods will pick up uh, some of the uh, the sound but we're gonna we're gonna shake this again for another 15 to 20 seconds. If you have a cocktail shaker at home, good rule of thumb if you don't want to time yourself or, or count, is you shake it until the tin starts to get a little frosty on the outside. Okay, so we're just gonna give that a quick shake. By the end of uh, your time shaking it, it should almost be too cold for you to hold on to. Okay, so that's a good rule of thumb. Again, this drink we're going to serve without ice, so I've pre chilled the glass. Got this great little cocktail coupe uh, here. Again, smaller in volume, so not as big as one of those big V shaped martini glasses. I'm going to use my strainer, and actually with this one, I'm going to double strain it. So I've got this great little uh, fine tea strainer that I'm going to use when I'm uh, when I'm straining the cocktail. And what that's going to do for me is it's actually going to get rid of all the little shards of uh, of ice and whatnot that are left in the, uh, the shaker as we start to strain that liquid out. So the glass full. Once again, with this one, I love the aroma and the flavor of some fresh citrus. 
So I've got a lovely orange zest that I'm gonna do over the surface of the glass here. And then we've got our ice wine cosmopolitan. Okay, and you can see the, the color isn't the, well, I mean, it's kind of tough to see on here, but it's, it's more of a, a pale red uh, versus a uh, cranberry cocktail. All of these drinks that you're going to see today are actually available in a cocktail kit form. Uh, so if you don't have all of these ingredients uh, available to you, we do have um, some ready-made kits uh, put together for you to uh, be able to enjoy at home.